Today, we talk about the biggest, most badass sneaker unboxing of your lives. I poopy do scoop. See another black Adidas box. Ah, so I have a pair of the original OG colorway city socks, NMDs, NMD city socks. Uh, but this is now the 2.0 versions, CS2s. And here I went with the Ronin colorway. Just loved the way the knit pattern worked so well with that uh, circular pattern on the front. And then this interesting tongue situation with the leather band in the back. Really, really nice uh, color to set off the, uh, the navy blue. And then, of course, the block on the inside. The uh, gummish, translucent, tannish uh, outsole. And yeah, I just really thought this, this worked really well. I could totally see this as like a pop in your face type of colorway uh, that is still a little bit subtle, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think this works really, really well. I really couldn't think of a better colorway to get. And I forget what Ronin means. Um, I think it's like some kind of Japanese warrior code or something like that. But uh, regardless, I thought this was the best colorway. So, and again, to complete the boost collection, had to get a pair of CS2s. So here we is. Really thought uh, these were much, much better than the Ronnie Feig uh, collaborations. Really didn't like that line going down the middle. Uh, just didn't look right to me compared to something like this. So went with this. By the way, shout out to the DHL delivery guy who decided to have a punching bag contest with his buddies, I think. But anyway, had to go all the way to some shop in Spain to get these delivered. I believe the name of the store is uh, Sivas Descalzo. If anyone recognizes that brand, shout out to my Spain fans out there. Uh, but yeah, couldn't really find them anywhere in the US, so I had to go international. But yeah, some of you may be able to tell. Season 666666. Lovely premium feel box, as it should be. And inside, ooh, lovely material on this bag. Oh, and they already come in the bag. So, if you see here, we have the Yeezy Season 6 sneaker, crepe sneaker. So, a crepe bottom. If I can get it to focus on it, yep, crepe bottom. Premium, premium, premium suede. I have never seen suede this hairy before. I have actually, but not this much of it all at once. So, uh, reason I went with this, wow, look at that. This is crazy. Definitely don't wear this in the uh, in the rain, folks. Love this like tannish, olivey lacing going on here. Came with this premium, premium bag. Let's see if, yep, it says season 666 on the bag. So, you know, the reason I went with these is because uh, even though Oh, that's kind of interesting. It's got this like weird crack in the midsole. I don't know if that's on purpose or what, but it looks on purpose, but kind of whack. But I'm glad it's on the medial side, am I right? But anyway, the reason I went with these, and these look kind of big, actually. So I might have gotten a size too big, but that's okay. Uh, the reason I went with these, um, and that's the crappy thing about these, is uh, I had to take a guess on my size, and traditionally, European and higher end shoes have very, uh, um, you know, weird sizing. They usually have, uh, you know, and they usually run a little small, so I end up, uh, or big, I guess. Yeah, whatever, it's too late now. But uh, I may have gotten a little size too big on these, but that's okay, at least they'll fit me. Um, very premium leather feel on the, on the inside. Again, another hit of season 666. So the reason I went with these, you know, obviously Yeezy has been making his own you know, Yeezy line for six seasons now. Uh, but I've never bought any of his crap boots he's put out or military boots or duck boots that he's put out. Uh, reason being, you know, I just feel like sneakers are where it's at when it comes to Ye. Um, you know, not, not dress shoes or other things he may be interested in making um, or the clothes. But uh, this was the first time he made his own sneaker. Uh, granted, it's a crep sneaker uh, and very premium sneaker, but and it's season six, 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 six. So, for all those reasons, I hit the uh, buy button. I have always been a fan of his sneakers, so had to cop one just to com continue completing the collection of all his sneakers, and I count this as a sneaker, so here we are. And again, being his own sneaker, not something associated with Nike or Adidas, I thought that was pretty monumental. A lot of people haven't been too much of a fan of it. I don't know if it's because there's no hype around it because it hasn't been as available in the States 
or if the retail price is so high that no one's really interested, but regardless, I'm a collector, so I had to get it. Traditional Nike box. Ooh, so here we have the OG. Well, not OG, but uh, I believe this is the first time they've retroed since the OG. Nike Air Safaris. So, this was another Tinker Hatfield masterpiece that he originally released in 1987. This came in a pack, actually, with the Air Max 1 in that OG red colorway uh, in 1987, along with the uh, first Nike Air trainer that uh, was Bo Jackson and uh, um, McEnroe's, uh, you know, key sneaker at that time. Uh, so here you see on the tongue, Air Safari. Um, you know, it's sort of that... Uh, you know, and, and a lot of people are going nuts over the animal pack and the Atmos animal pack and whatnot, but to me, this was where it was at. So this was kind of when Nike started to foray into that lifestyle mode, because this obviously didn't serve much of an um, athletic purpose, but in that pack, it kind of just served as a, a new subset of, um, of uh, what am I trying to say? It just, it just served a whole new audience, I would say, um, especially with the direction sneakers were going lifestyle-wise. So, uh, you know, you can barely make out the uh, Nike swoosh on the side there, but it's there, and you get those all those different hits of animal prints, but it's not too over the top like the, uh, like the animal pack Air Max 1 and, and Air Max 95. You can miss me with that. It eat what it eat. I'll stick to these. These obviously won't be like a daily wear, but just always a fan of having new silhouettes traditional silhouettes and um, and things that uh, you know historically have some significance and in this case coming out at the same time as the Air Max 1 and having Tinker's Magic attached to it had to get it and it was a quick strike I was surprised I uh, you know got it on the uh, got it on the Nike uh, sneakers app so there you go another Nike box voila ah yes also was able to cop these at retail. Very happy about that. And not gonna lie, the uh, Air Max 98 in one of the OG colorways, the Gundam colorway, has been released since the uh, since the OG release in 98. Uh, not gonna lie, I really wasn't a fan of the 98 the first time I ever saw it. And first time I ever saw it come back was uh, with the Supreme collabs. And I really wasn't a fan of that. I was like, really don't care. And I really didn't care much for Supreme at that time either. So that didn't help. But uh, once I started seeing images of this surface and, and say that they were coming back, I was actually pretty excited for it because um, the colorway is just super, super awesome. I love the hit of red on the bottom, the hit of red on the tiny swoosh, coupled with that bright blue, and then the navy as well, and just such a funky mix and mash of blockings of color and, and patterns. You know, super, super, uh, super happy to have these. I don't know why it's so foggy. It's just kind of weird. Especially for retail. You would think this came out like eight years ago and someone just like had this sitting in the closet collecting dust. But anyway, um, yeah, then you get the red swoosh. Bop there. Bop. But yeah, just the details on this are super, super fine. Love that. Um, Air Max. And I think a lot of this uh, model, you know, didn't really collect a lot of hype because... You know, it was right on the heels of the Air Max 97. They used the same uh, sole and the same air unit as the 97, so it really wasn't that drastic of a change. But, you know, going from, uh, I, I would say I prefer this upper to the 97 upper, just with all the curves and waves. Not as big of a fan as that as I am with this, so this one I actually like a lot. So really excited to wear these. And uh, and especially it's, it's owed to Gundam. I wasn't a big Gundam uh, cartoon fan growing up, but I understand it's it's uh, cultural significance, especially to Japan. So so really uh, happy to see that they nailed it with this um, with this colorway and the way they they blocked it. Really really pulls it all together. So uh, an old school Nike sportswear box, Air Max One Premium Quick Strike. What do we have here? Oh, that's right. I forgot I ordered these. So another. Huh, what is this? Interesting, I had no idea they came with these. Anatomical art supports. I guess in the olden days they used to include these with the Nike Sportswear premium shoes perhaps. Maybe some of you have more details on that, but anyway. Um, 
Yeah, I had mentioned this in my other um, Air Max One Mini History video that this was on my wish list. And shortly after that video, I, I actually found these in my size. Actually, someone reached out in the comment section. Uh, sorry if I forget who you are. This is so long ago. Uh, and I've been waiting to open up all these boxes. But um, this was the Pata Air Max One, one of them at least, that they actually worked on. Uh, but this was the chlorophyll green colorway. Um, I love the Air Max One silhouette, and I love all the traditional colors on them. So obviously the OG red, the OG blue, uh, the OG navy obsidian, and then throw in the premium stuff like the, the Milano, the, uh, what's the other one I have? I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, but uh, then the uh, Amsterdam, obviously. And then of course this to get a nice classic green on it. And it's a very beautiful green because A, comes with that little mini swoosh. I love that they added that little detail. It comes with the green laces, but I don't know if I want to keep those or if I want to switch those out or, or leave the white in. I'm, I'm going to be on the fence about that. Or let me know in the comment section if you guys have a big preference. But also the green air bubble. Love that outsole pattern, as you see. Tip of uh, green there. And then, uh, yeah, this, this uh, kind of denim-y quality to it as opposed to the traditional materials used. And then, bop, that hit of knit, or I should say stitched Nike Air, and again, that chlorophyll color. But yeah, this is just timeless, timeless, timeless. So glad to have these. Really hope they don't re-retro these anytime soon. Or if they do, I hope it's, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, different enough that I won't be pissed that I bought these for the price I did. But yeah, shout out to the guy that put me on to the fact that these were available for sale. And uh, <laughs> actually, I remember now, uh, when he told me about it, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna hold off for now. I've been spending way too much money on shoes. And then, of course, by the time I changed my mind, like literally days later, the price, that shoe had sold and then another one became available not too long afterwards for like an extra 300 bucks. So I was like, God damn it. But anyway, have them now, so we're in this. Whew, guys, I am sweating. Uh, this is a lot more boxes than I anticipated. I don't know why I waited so long to open these up just to be dramatic about it. but. Uh, Join me on the next one. I'm going to split these up into separate episodes so that uh, you guys don't get bored and I can uh, crank out more videos for you. So uh, see you on the next one.